applied to St. Vespasian I'm very surprised that they were Jewish because I, I've not heard any historian ever say that before and I've never come across any text sure. I, would need, I would need to see evidence of that sure sure yeah. um, but in terms of do you feel like the Flavian dynasty so the dynasty of Titus and Vespasian they had a influence on early Christianity in what in way terms of, what, what, example, what influence do you think they might one have example I can give, one example I can give is the most prominent symbol of early Christianity was the anchor and the dolphin and the anchor and the fish and that also happened to be the symbol the house of Flavian well, I, I, used as their house symbol I thought the earliest symbol was the fish yeah, but also in association with the anchor because I've not come across the anchor in, so much. What, what, um, what is it? What is, what is one fish? of the earliest iconography? Well, what does fish mean? The fish. Um, so the fish is a different symbol to the anchor and the fish okay, so together. Right. The, 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 the usual common one was you know what fish means? Yeah, yeah. Ichthys. Which means? Yeah. So like um, like sorry. Please. No. What does it mean? It, it, it matters. Well, yeah. What? Well, why? Is, why did Christianity have fish as a as a symbol? They put on the walls of a catechism. The fish are men, like the, the illusion. No, no. I, I, I was asking because yes. it, it ties in with your other point. Ichthus. Each letter begins uh, 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 as the beginning of a Greek word, okay. uh, which in English translates as Jesus Christ, Son of God, Savior. Yep. Right. So it's it's a, 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 a an anagram or whatever like that, and and the word. Ichthus just happens to correspond to that sentence. Anchor doesn't correspond to anything I've ever heard of, so I, I, I'm beginning because to know why I, Anchor was chosen. Are you familiar with the catacombs of St. Domitilla? No. So this is one of the earliest... Um, well, what, what does the Anchor mean? So the Anchor, according well, to traditional that? Christianity, it means um, hope of Jesus. I thought they come across that. But the other meaning of the anchor in the same period and the same context, in the same time frame, was as a house symbol for the emperor of Vespasian and Titus. Yeah. And they, 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 were, they weren't Christians or Jews, they, they were pagans. They, they had nothing to do with Christianity, but the reason they, theologically. The, the reason they adopted the anchor and fish was because it was used in the Seleucid dynasty. No, no, by, no, 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 I'm, I'm explaining. Okay. Yeah. So, it was used in the Seleucid dynasty by, the emperor, by Seleucius back in the, those times. And the reason he used it was to try and justify himself as some sort of sun god. Well, that was very common to be, yeah, most of the emperors were sons of God or proclaimed as divine yeah. at their death or by the Senate who voted them. But that had nothing to do with Christianity. No, but now I'm saying that was used in that context in Greek. Anyway, um, yeah, so that, that was used in that context in um, Greece. What, what, what Romans, context? Sorry. In the context of it being. So Seleucus, the Seleucid emperor, he used the anchor and the fish as a way of showing that he is the son of God in some way, shape or form. And then that symbol was readopted by the Roman emperors Vespasian and Titus to become no. their house symbol. Yeah, but because, because it was Christian, you think? No, no, no. It wasn't a Christian symbol when Vespasian and Titus adopted it. But what's really interesting is the early church used the same symbol for their catacombs. What symbol? The anchor and the fish, and okay. the anchor and the dolphin. But they, they use fish, not because it had anything to do with Vespasian. Yeah, no, like, this is a different it, symbol. It, it, yeah, okay. This is a different right. symbol. So it's the anchor and the dolphin, or the anchor and the fish. So not just yeah. the ichthyus. But the, the ichthyus was far more common because it was explicitly Christological, where the anchor... Um, uh, what, what, what's the Christological significance of the anchor, do you think? So the anchor is meant to be about the, um, the fishes of men, so referring to that passage in the New Testament. Okay. So, but... It was also used but by I, the pagan I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't see anything... Yeah, if it was, it was a coincidence, because the pagan emperors are not Christians or Jews or anything like that. Yeah. They, 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 they didn't care about Christianity. If they did, they persecuted them. It has no, there's no relationship. Yeah, but they weren't persecuted. I, I, what I'm trying to argue is um, early Christianity is intrinsically linked to the Flavian dynasty of Roman emperors. Is it? Because the first, how, church, how, father, how it intrinsically linked? The first church father is St. Clement of Rome, who was a Flavian. The earliest evidence well, well, we so have well, of Christian... Well, 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 which is the church father? How do you know that he's the very first, Clement like, of Rome? Uh, Clement of Rome, he's um, seen as one of the early church fathers. Oh, so one I, of the earliest? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, one of the other. He's the very, sorry, very sorry, first. Right, that's right. interesting. I didn't realise there was a, that ranking. I'm okay. Okay. Yeah, Clement, so, well, he was, yeah, he was one of the first. Yeah, but he what's was, he got to do with Roman emperors? So he was um, allied with the space in Titus. Uh, 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 how do you know that? Because um, his wife... No, his wife, one, his one, wife? The um, emperor's wife? Or? Um, Clement of Rome's wife, um, oh, what was Saint Domitilla. Right. She, well, where did you read about her? 
So uh, the earliest, uh, like one of the earliest archaeological evidences we have of Christianity yeah. is her catacombs. Right. And they bear the symbol of the anchor and the dolphin. Yeah, but, but you were going to say about uh, how her husband was Clement of Rome. Yeah. So what was, and she was connected to the emperors. Yeah, because why would she be using the same symbol? Well, which symbol is that? Sir? Which symbol is that? The um, anchor and the dolphin and okay. the anchor and the fish. Why would they be using the same symbol as the Roman emperors of that time? Uh, I, like, I, I don't know, but there's no connection between, uh, I, I'm aware, between Clement and the emperors at all. I mean, I've read his letters. Yeah. They're very well known. They're published still. Yeah. And he, he makes no particular reference to the emperors at all. It's not, it's not what they're about. They're a persecuted minority in Rome. Uh, they're, they're just basically, for the Romans, they're just low life because a lot, a lot of the Christians were slaves and poor people and, and so on. There were some really early in the Roman Christians. Well, this is the end of the first century, yeah. And uh, they're not really they're people of great standing. Um, there are one or two exceptions, but they're mostly from the lowest social classes. So they don't really have that kind of elite standing that they would be uh, connected to the emperor. And there's, there, I'm not aware of anything by any early any emperor apart from Constantine, yeah. which in the fourth century, yeah. where Christianity has any role at all. Uh, within the imperial household. So, what, what I'm saying is the Empress Titus and Vespasian, sorry to give you, so, but the Empress Titus and Vespasian, they needed to justify their lineage of emperors because they're not from the Julius lineage of Dem Ju Justify what? Justify becoming emperor. Uh -huh. Because back then church and state were the same thing, so you had to justify. So back your, then what, sorry? Back church then and church state. and state, as in like religion and state, were the same thing. So to become an emperor, you had to justify it through but, but the imperial. There was no cult. church and state. I'm, 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 yeah, I'm okay. paraphrasing. So. But there was no church and state then. That, that We're talking about the imperial court, and right. like to become an emperor, you had to justify it through the imperial court. Yeah. So, so what, what, what do you think then? Uh, I mean, uh, I don't really go along with anything you said actually. But yeah. what, what, what's, what, what, what's the end, what's the end product of, of it? Are you saying that? The Roman Empire from the beginning was uh, creating Christianity or influencing it. Yeah, so what or, I'm trying to say what, what is that, say? that okay. The, um, I don't have all the sources to hand, but what I'm trying to say is that there was a Jewish revolt against Rome. The context of first you mean century, AD 70? Yeah. Not, the, not context, the, AD the context of first right. century Palestine was yeah. very hostile towards the Roman Empire, right? There was a the lot context of, of hang on. Sorry, yeah. you're making a lot of statements. I'm just trying to process them. Sure. First century Palestine was very hostile to Rome. Yeah, to the Roman occupation. So we had zealot. We had a community of proto zealots. Well, some were, some we weren't. A, According yeah, yeah. to Josephus, uh, the Sadducees. Hang on, hang on. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't agree with your sweeping statement. Sure. The Sadducees were not like that. They were in bed with the Romans, not literally, but you know, they were very pro-Roman. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Pharisees were pretty. Uh, not political, that yeah. they were focused much on Torah observance and so on. Um, the Zealots certainly were, yeah. but they ended up killing a lot of Jews as well. Uh, the Essenes were even more unpolitical because they withdrew into the desert. So I don't, I wouldn't agree with your characterization that the, the Jews in Palestine were all no, no, no. Uh, well, uh, okay. uh, rising up against the Romans. I think the Jewish community was quite split. Into so what things. I'm trying to say is that, okay, so the Jew, the, in the Jewish community, there was the Pharisees, the Zealots and the Sikhari, which yeah. were very anti-Rome. Then you had a group of Jews, like the Sadducees, the Herodians, that were allied with Rome, right? In some way, shape, or form. Yeah. So there's this division in first century Palestine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's and what I was trying to say. But rather, trying... your, your claim, which was that, that Rome was anti, uh, sorry, the Palestine was anti, oh, Judeans like were anti-Roman. I, I don't. These quite... are like puppet leaders. The Sadducees and the Herodians right. yeah. are puppet leaders yeah. installed yeah. by the Roman Empire. It's a bit like today, you know. Yeah. Uh, in terms of Muslims, yeah, some support the rulers, some are against them, some yeah. are apolitical, uh, don't want to be involved in politics. Yeah. Some support jihad, violent yeah. uh, attacks on on the on the West. It's quite a similar kind of dynamic going on. That's what I'm trying uh, to point actually, to. Yeah. So yeah. what I'm trying to point to is the potentiality of Isa al coming and having much support amongst the Pharisees and the Zealots against the Roman-aligned Herodians and the Roman-aligned... Oh, so, so Jesus the revolutionary, uh, he, he's a, a, into revolt. It's possible, but... And then what I'm trying to say is uh, I, this, this it, mentality... It's not really Islamic. Okay. But this mentality existing in first century Palestine, the, the Roman Empire going in, destroying Jerusalem, right? Because there's a lot of 
potentially early Christians that were very anti-Rome and Torah Orthodox and early and Jews that were anti-Rome and Torah Orthodox so the Christian uh, the Roman Empire as a form of propaganda because you can destroy Jerusalem physically but you can't just destroy Jerusalem ment mentally right so as a form of propaganda they them issuing um, Torah light like you know like Roman friendly Gospels as a form of Roman propaganda. So, so who's, who's issuing Torah friendly gospels? No, no I'm saying I'm saying promotion of. Oh, who, who's promoting Torah friendly gospels? So the people that will be promoting Torah friendly gospels are Herodian Jews. Herodian as, Jews. So, for example, so the Herodian Jews are promoting the four gospels. No, no, I'm no. saying, for example, through Paul. So through the figure of Paul, right? Paul, the reason he was sent by the Herodians to quench the early Christians was because he found them a threat, right? Right. He found them a threat, right? Paul, he was killing and persecuting the early Christians because he found them a threat. In what way did he find them a threat? What I'm, what I'm proclaiming is he possibly found I'm, them I'm a generally, threat. I'm generally interested in yeah. why he persecuted the early Christians. Yeah, so the theory is, you know, the classical tradition we're told by Christians is he had a sudden change of heart. What if he didn't have a change of heart? What if his goal was the same the whole way through? So maybe he was persecuting the early church because they were Torah Orthodox, they would practice the law, right? And he's a Herodian Jew who's allied with Rome. What do you mean a Herodian Jew? So because because as far as I know, Paul wasn't a Herodian Jew. He was uh, Paul of Tarsus, who was a Hellenistic Greek-speaking Jew from what is today Turkey. Sure. I had no particular relation with Herod, I, I'm aware I, I, of. I, I, I mean, he wasn't known yeah. as a Herodian Jew, as far as I'm aware at all. If anything, Gamaliel in Jerusalem, uh, the famous Jewish scholar, uh, I, I wasn't aware that he was associated with Herod specifically. Uh, wh wh where did you get that idea from? So that's kind of from, um, in some other writings by Josephus, he talks about a, a member of the Herodian family called Saulus. Uh -huh. And this Saulus was probably a son of Alexandra. So Josephus mentions Paul? So this is potentially a link to Paul. No, but does, to, sorry, does, yeah. does Josephus mention Paul? So he talks about because I'm not aware that he does. He talks about a figure called Saulus. Um, yeah, but does it, yeah, Saulus is a very common name because he's yeah. the first king of Israel. A lot of people were called Saul. No, does, it, does he mention the Paul that we're talking about, Josephus? So that's the theory. That's the theory. That no, 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 not a theory. Yeah. Sorry, it's a question of fact here. Yeah. Does Josephus mention Paul of Tarsus? And my, my answer is no. So what you're saying, you're constructing a speculative idea based sure. on not actual evidence but on sure. what might have been the case Josephus doesn't mention Apostle Paul doesn't, doesn't know about him doesn't care about him he mentions Jesus but very yeah. very briefly in a heavily interpreted text That's that we have today it possibly um, mentioned Jesus. so it's unlikely because Paul was no, a, a, a serious player in the in the uh, first century world according to the Romans so he's yeah. just some dude who got executed uh, in, in Rome. Yeah, but the, the, one, of the, one of the ties to Paul being Saulus is Saulus, as a figure, gets called to the Emperor Nero. We need to look at the passage. Sure, sure. We need, I mean, seriously, we can't... We can't this is a, this is a, this, we're not going to do it now. Yeah. We need to look at it properly. I, I, I've never heard any scholar ever suggest that, that Josephus threatens the Apostle Paul. Okay, but I, 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 can, uh, I can explore this with you. No, well, well, yeah, but... Um, and if he never mentions him by name, then this is speculation. Uh, but, uh, okay. So, um, in terms of like, um, so the early church being Torah Orthodox, and oh, well, yeah. I wonder what you were doing. <laughs> okay. So why, why, why I'm trying to say you're very kind. Keep no, 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 keep, no, no, he's no. keeping me dry. From, even uh, in the, even yeah. in the. Otherwise, I'd be wet by now. Sorry, I should have brought the umbrella. No, it's too, it's, he's very kindly uh, fixing me. So. so, in terms of like Paul as a figure, um, you mentioned he was Greek speaking. He seemed to be, he had. Um, well, it's he in Tarsus, it was a Greek yeah, yeah, sure, sure. city. Yeah. Sure. So, what, what I'm talking about is he could possibly be one of those Jews in that context that was more aligned with Rome than with. The Pharisees and that he, kind of he, mentality. He was, he was a Roman citizen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he was aligned with Rome. Absolutely. Sure. He so was born a Roman citizen. Yeah. What I'm talking about is he was yeah. he was sent to persecute the early church, right? Yeah. So he was persecuting the early church, yes, potentially yeah. because the early church were Torah Orthodox, more of the mentality of the Pharisees and the Zealots than he would like. It's possible. What's your sure. evidence for that? So in evidence. terms of like the, the uh, conflict between Paul and James. No, no. Uh, well, no, well, where, well, no. Well, what's the evidence of Paul persecuting? Church because they were Torah observant Jews. No, but there's evidence of Paul persecuting the church, right? 
And then there's evidence. Yes, but there is a reason why. No one disputes he persecuted. He says that himself in his letter, so that's not an issue. But the reason why you're saying that he persecuted the Christians because they were more Torah observing. No, I'm saying this is potentially one of the reasons, right? Well, what were so, the reasons again that so they he, were? They, they were more Torah Orthodox than um, than he liked. I think okay, and your evidence for that is the fact that he argues with James at a later stage at the temple about him. Uh, what, what, so what argument? Where is so it? In terms of what, you know when they um, when they conflict on opinions on um, when, when, Paul, when Paul gets which, which, which text are we talking about? We're talking about in the Gospels where Paul gets ah. brought to the temple in order to repent and perform a sacrifice. Paul's in, not mentioned in the Gospels. No, in the Gospel, sorry, in the, in the, uh, in the writings in right. the New Testament, not in the Gospel, sorry. Okay. Yeah, so, he gets mentioned in the writings in the New Testament, where he's brought to... You mean in Acts? In Acts, yeah. So in Acts, where he's brought to the temple and he performs a sacrifice to show he's not against... Acts 15. Mosaic law, right? So, what I'm saying is, the Torah, um, that Paul was against the early... Paul was against the early Christians because they were Torah Orthodox, and then he suddenly has a change of heart, he sees the revelation. But, but why would Paul, an Orthodox Jew, yeah. have a problem with other Orthodox Jews who are practicing the law? I don't get it. No, what if he wasn't, like what I'm trying to say is, what if he wasn't as Orthodox? But he said he, he was, he said he, 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 he talks about his life prior to this vision he had, when he was very practicing, he, 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 made, he boasts about it. He said, I, I was full. Translation usually in his observance. So he was a guy who took the Torah as Jews did. I mean, that's what they. Yeah, but, there was, but what I'm trying to say is they, we're not. I feel like we're ignoring the dynamic of there was two types of mentality existing, two big divisions of mentality existing in first century Palestine. There was Jews there that were very Roman aligned, and Jews that weren't as practicing. Yeah, of the yeah. Torah but I, I, I just think I, I don't think Paul persecuted the Christians because they obeyed the Torah too much. I, I, I've not heard that view, but I. I think he did persecute them because they claimed that Messiah had come in yeah. Jesus and that this Messiah was crucified yeah. and rose again. And that this is a, a preposterous belief if you're an Orthodox Jew because nowhere in the Jewish scriptures does it ever speak about the Messiah being crucified uh, uh, an ignomini ignominious death, yeah. a very shameful death. Yeah. I mean, this is ter it's a disgusting idea from that kind of perspective. Uh, the, the, the prophets never fo foresaw this happening. So I suspect he could have been persecuting a, a sect that was just a crazy, mad movement that was just appeared on the scene, that were coming with these, these silly ideas of the Messiah being horribly crucified. I mean, you, you can imagine the mindset being yes. disgusted by that. That's more plausible rather than, oh, you Christians are obeying the law even more than I am, therefore I'm going to persecute them. That doesn't sound plausible. Because he, he would praise them. He would say, well, wow, you're putting me to shame, you, you Christians. You're obeying it even more than I am. So I, I don't quite buy that. Unless you've got scriptural evidence, I mean not scriptural evidence, if you've got actual text to have Paul say, I post to the Christians because they obeyed the Torah uh, more than I did or something. So. But in terms of like after he has his conversion to Christianity, yeah. he starts to preach a very Roman aligned religion, right? So Roman aligned religion. In terms of it being very Torah light, not being Torah Orthodox. Um, well, so yeah, Romans chapter thirteen, so he talks about the, you know obeying, obeying the authority. So it's very yeah. Ro Philo Roman, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm yeah, saying, that's what if he was like that the whole way through, and then he never had a change of heart? He just a change of heart about what? So if he was about allied to Rome before. If he, well, was, he, was, he was a Roman citizen. Sure, so, sure, sure. Uh, so he was a Roman citizen. Right? He wasn't so some kind of independent. He, why would the Romans give him citizenship if he was a part? If he was, I'm not sure he, they did give him citizenship. I think he was born a Roman citizen. Yeah, so, his family were Romans. Yeah, sure, sure. I'm, but, but you see, but most Jews lived outside of Jerusalem, outside of yeah. Israel, yeah. Yeah. in the diaspora. Like most yeah. Jews today, don't live in Israel. They live in America yeah. or wherever. They don't live there. Yeah. And so he was born, like most Jews are, even today. Yeah. In, maybe in the West, with Western passports, Western languages, yeah. they even look Western actually, they even look like white people mostly. Yeah. Uh, so Paul would not have been born in Judea. No, uh, I'm saying so is, it's not okay, like a change of allegiance. He, he, was, was he, he, wasn't born in, he wasn't born in Judea, right? No. He was, you're saying he was basically very Torah Orthodox. Why? No, I'm, not, I, I'm, yeah. not, I'm saying he says he was. Yeah, I'm saying why should we take him out of work? Well, why not? He was a Jew. Jews, but Jews obeyed the Torah. I mean, it's the it's the default position for Jews to obey the Torah. That's yeah. what Jews do. Yeah. Uh, so it, it's it's you have to argue that he didn't really, because that would be very odd for a Jew not to follow the law. 
people would it it's like for muslim you know, i mean i know they're non-practicing muslims but it's even more so in the ancient world that you you follow, if you were identified as a jew part of the jewish community you obey the law it's part of your community it's what you did so uh, um, hello hello <laughs> so um unless you can come up i mean he says in one corinthians that he obeyed the law faultlessly i have no reason i, I don't know why i would doubt that but why would a Jew make up a story about them being Jewish? <laughs> That's what Jews did, they obeyed the law. Yeah, but I'm saying Herodian Jews, Jews... Of, Herodian Jews? Like, what, like what are they? Jews in terms of like King Herod and... But Herod's just a, a guy. Yeah. There's, I wasn't aware there's a sect called no, the Herodian Jews. Jews who are um, basically the puppet government of Palestine at the time. And they were very Roman aligned, right? Well, Herod was a puppet of the Romans. Yeah, so I'm saying yeah. Jews of that variety. So, yeah. I, I, I'm not sure. I'm not going to. I'm I'm going not sure. to I mean, I don't know of the evidence that Paul was a part of this, what you're calling Herodian Jews. I just don't see it. I mean, I, maybe there's evidence. I just, I don't. Yeah. You have to tell me what it yeah, is. Yeah, sure, sure. I can but you mentioned it. Josephus, but then Josephus doesn't actually mention Paul, so that's not really evidence. It's your speculation that he might have alluded to him by someone who had a similar name. But Saul was a very common name, as sure. I as I've said before. It's like being called Muhammad or something. It's yeah. not. You know, he's the first king of Israel, so he's a very prestigious figure. But in terms of how many souls were called up to the, the emperor in the years around 70 AD, and both Paul and both Saulus were called up to the emperor around that time. So there's one um, evidence of it, one proposition I'm giving of them being the same person. I can look up for some more if you want. No, no not really. I, um, I, I think your theories are speculative, actually, and, and I don't find them very compelling without any evidence. Uh, but you could be right. I mean, yeah. hey, we don't have the whole story and there's lots of gaps in our narrative. So you could be right. I, I just don't feel you presented any evidence to suggest that that's... Sorry, I didn't mean to, like... I, so, just can't, I was just playing it off with you. Is that okay? No, I, I, I'm just giving my honest, honest feedback. You could be right, but yeah. I, I, I don't feel you presented enough evidence, uh, particularly from the, the sources, yeah. to... But you might be right, because we have lots of gaps, so who knows? God knows best. Yeah. <laughs> Salam. 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 Uh, I was just talking about getting, the getting, whole... Getting wet. Yeah. Um, I have a question. Sorry? I have a question. All right, okay. okay. Uh, I'm having a quick... Sorry, I'm yeah. finishing off a conversation but, with him. Sorry. Uh, I think there's some sort of evidence, but yeah. you can't say for certainty. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm not saying for certainty, but yeah. I'm saying, for me, this... Um, this is far more compelling than the Christian um, Christian line of events. For me, this seems far more compelling. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it could be. Yeah, it I should say, be. it's possible. But, I, but it does undermine uh, biblical scholarship. Uh, yeah, yeah, and that's why I feel a lot of New Testament scholarship, they don't support this opinion. They're very anti this opinion because it would undermine the entire New Testament. You need this no, I, I, can imagine in my, I can imagine a lot of scholars would say to what you said, that's very well and good. Yeah. What is your evidence? Because yeah, that's what, the historical critical method is all about looking at the text in their context, authenticating them, yeah. not being anachronistic, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. There's, yeah. there's a very established methodology that uh, historians sure, sure. use, and I imagine they'll put put what you said through that grid yeah. and look at the other side and what's come out. And so actually, there's not much there, but you could be right because hey, you know, we don't know everything, and, and that's what I'm trying to do there is to test yeah. what you're saying against the sources. And I, I'm not really come. I'm not feeling you're presenting a strong case. It's spe speculative, and it, this is the soul may be the Apostle Paul, therefore... Yeah, but uh, even, if he's, even if he's not... Um, it, even, even though no historian ever known has ever identified Paul in Josephus' works, I'm thinking, wow, you know, that would be a first. Sure. <laughs> uh, and if historians are not identifying Saul in Josephus, you have to ask why, because he's not there. And the word Saul doesn't count. It's a very common name. Okay. It's like the word Mary, for example, and James. Yeah, there, there, there are like six Marys, four James in the New Testament itself. And even Jesus, Joshua so, in Hebrew, is a very, very common name. We just think it applies to one dude. This, um, but there are lots of Jesuses even in the, even in the first century. This Saul is I'm proposing that as being the figure Paul. Um, he was the son of uh, probably the son of Alexander. He was a member of the royal family. He was born to a wealthy. Oh, Dyson that's definitely not Paul is after saying because Paul wasn't born into any. Uh, uh, he, he, no one's ever. There's, he's never said that he was born into the royal family. This, this, this is. He's not known to history as being that at all. Yeah. This is someone else. Okay. I mean, you can't just you but, can't just say like, he's Saul and therefore that's how, how common was how common was Roman citizenship amongst. Uh, 
How common was Roman citizenship amongst like the Jewish diaspora? I don't know. I don't know. Because I don't feel like it was so easy to attain. When you say you don't feel, that's based yeah, on what his, historical evidence. Yeah, sure, sure. That's just a feeling. That's why I said feeling. Because a feeling isn't yeah. isn't evidence. Yeah, sure. Because I, I've just heard things. I don't want to like use them as factual, but I've heard right. it was quite hard to attain Roman citizenship ah. as a diaspora. But notice you said attain. Yeah. Yeah. What if you're born as a Roman citizen? Yeah. But, being so, but Paul, Paul didn't attain citizenship. Oh, so he, he was born a Jew, uh, born a, a Roman citizen. Attaining it is one thing, and but then born being country. born a it's like being becoming an American citizen. Yeah. You, just, you, don't, you just can't go into a shop and buy it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, 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 hang on. It's it's something you you a green card is, is you know you need to. Uh, but for Americans, kids are born into American families all the time. It's not a big deal for them. It's easy for them to. It's easy for an American couple to have a kid, and that kid's gonna 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 be an American. But if I want to be an American citizen, boy, do I have to do this and this and this. So you know, it's easy or not, depending on who you are. Um, but it also depended on the emperor. Some emperors uh, opened up citizenship more to the frontier tribe to try and incorporate, like Hadrian did. He, uh, he he wanted people to come in, become Roman citizens, and stop fighting the Romans. Um, but other others wanted to push them back and didn't want them to become Roman. I mean, it depends on which Roman emperor as well. It's not like a trans-historical. They never accepted anyone. It depends. Sorry, on sorry this is this is like. The whole issue of Paul is a bit of a side note to the bigger issue of, um, you know, the Flavian dynasty being linked to Christianity. So in terms of that, yeah, I don't think there's any link. I have not seen. I've not. I've not heard you present any evidence at all. There's any. Any. But by link, it's, what do you mean by link? But in terms of any positive involvement in Christianity, I don't think there's anything at all. I don't think you've given any evidence. At all. But do, do you feel like? Okay, I'm, I'll stop using the word "feel" because it's not like I'm using that too much. But in terms of the gospel. In terms Nazam. Of... <laughs> it should be the other way up, Nazam. <laughs> I don't think it's raining. So yeah, it's, it's not. Raining it's not raining anyway, Nazam. <laughs> it's not raining. It's not raining. Okay. So yeah. with the New Testament, yeah, if it can be established that if it can be established that the New Testament is a form of Roman propaganda against the Torah Orthodox Pharisees and the Torah Orthodox Zealots and is written in support of the Herodian Jews and the Sadducees in order to promote that kind of thinking. No, I don't think that's true at all. I think that, that's... But start, the New Testament is a library of books. Yeah. It's not like written by one guy. Yeah. So you're, you're generalizing about, you know, a lot of people. And they all... And they, when I read Matthew, for example, which yeah. is very pro-Torah, yeah. Jesus is a Torah observant Jew, encourages Torah observance. This Herodian trope that you're, that you're mentioning is not there so what at about, all. What about and, and that's the most pro-Torah gospel of the four, sure. I would argue. But, okay, let's use the example of Luke. So you mentioned earlier that Luke, um, when it references the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven, that is, um, that could possibly, that's alluding to the fact that it was written after the destruction of the, the temple, right? And it's no, no, alluding no, to the no, no, I didn't, no, 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 I didn't say that. I said Luke, writing on talks about the armies yeah. uh, invading Jerusalem. It's a historical detail that's missing from Mark, suggesting that Luke is writing after the event. Yeah. So he's adding colour to his story of the destruction of the temple that only someone who knew about the event sure. could have done. Ma Ma Mark, I'm saying, didn't know that, had that knowledge. Therefore, he it's a genuine, I think it's a genuine prophecy there. I have no problem with Jesus prophesying in the, in the temple. Absolutely, he's a prophet, absolutely. But the detail, the specificity that Luke adds betrays the fact that he wrote after AD 70. There are other details as well, uh, but that, that's one of the big issues, the big, that's one of the big reasons why scholars date Luke after Mark in the 80s. It's nothing to do with Herod or Herodian temple stuff. I, 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 that's, that's, I don't. You seem to have a idée fixe with Herod. I don't know. No, no. I'm talking. What, why, where, where that's what I'm talking about. What I'm trying to make a clear distinction is between the practicing Jewish laymen and the practicing Pharisees and the practicing zealots and the puppet government of um, Palestine, which was um, like people like King Herod, people like the Sadducees, who were Roman aligned, mm. right? And this is the context of the first century. 
Palestine. Yeah. But what I'm trying to say is Shut up! the gospels Shut up! seem to be promoting the gospels seem to be pro very strong propaganda against the Pharisees, very strong propaganda against the Zealots. That's what I'm trying to portray. And but what I'm trying to portray is well, they're, they're anti-Pharisee. Yeah, this is true. Yeah. But why are they anti-Pharisee? Why are they? Yeah. Well, I mean, what's your theory? My theory is they're anti-Pharisee because potentially Isa Islam could have been a prominent figure amongst the Pharisees, right? And the reason that they're anti-Pharisee is to quench that thinking, completely destroy that thinking. Well, what, 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 what you think about the Pharisee thinking as if there was a thing called Pharisee thinking? What, what is Pharisee yeah. thinking? Like being very anti-Rome. Because, the, because, because Pharisee Rome. theology is yeah. something that I think Jesus would have agreed with over against the Sadducees, for yeah, example. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So he's not anti-Pharisee yeah. historically yeah. at all. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So yeah. that's what I'm trying to say. That. Well, that's, that's the, ir the, that's reason, the irony. The reason the yeah. Gospels are written is a form of propaganda against the Pharisees, against that thinking, in order to portray Isa as a Roman-aligned figure. But why would he have been Roman-aligned? He would have been more Pharisee than No, I, I think, yeah, I, I, Luke, for example, is very pro-Roman. Whenever the whenever the Roman centurions and whatnot appear in the Gospels, they're always kind of benign figures. Yeah. They're not kind of, they're, they're not kind of a terrible threat. And, 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 and uh, you're right, they are quite pro-Roman. Uh, but they're trying to present Christianity as not a threat to the authorities. So you know, don't persecute us. We're we're quite we're hard on our Jewish brothers, and we're quite friendly towards you lot, the, Jew, the Romans. Yeah, that's there. That's there throughout the New Testament. Paul, Paul as well is saying Romans 13. There is one exception, which is why I don't agree with your characterization of the is, a, is a, the Book of Revelation, which is very very anti-Roman. The Whore of Babylon, as it's called, is Rome. It's, it's a, a way. Of, so, Book of Revelation yeah. is very anti-Rome, whereas Paul is quite pro-Rome. Revelation is written very distinct from the other books in terms of the time period, as it did last. What do you mean, very distinct? Is it, is it written in a later period, right? Uh, I'm not sure when it was written, but the point is, it's in the New Testament. This is your point. It's written in the first century, probably. I think there are. It's not the the last book to be written. That is usually seen as two Peter, okay. author maybe in the middle of the second century so it's not the last book of the bible to be written oh, maybe it was. and it's in the new testament and it's the opposite of what you say yeah. but so you, you actually you're over generalizing i think you can, you, well, I, i'm uh, talking more about, about the gospels i'm talking about the gospels being yeah. Roman propaganda against the pharisees against i think the Zealots, but you can you can argue that if you want i think i think it's i think it's a bit strong but you can argue that you can argue that yeah because it's, they're, they're friendly towards rome you're right yeah i just i think i don't think it's roman state propaganda i think the gospels are not written by no, no, Ro Roman to, written on down. behalf of the Roman state, sure, sure. trying to. I don't think that's. I'm not saying even if they're not written top down. Approach, I'm talking are. about their, their, that thinking is promoted. So gospels that were more Roman and are promoted instead of gospels that were more Gnostic or gospels well, that have another. It, it, I think that the gospels that are, that are not offensive to the Romans. Yeah, yeah. They're uh, they're that's not. really important. Yeah. I, I, you, that, to help Christianity be accepted by sure. the mainstream Roman society. And it, and it worked, by the way, because Constantine ended up agreeing and yeah. becoming the emperor. So it was a successful campaign. Uh, but I, I do stress in the earlier Gospels, and this is why I think I don't quite agree with you, yeah. the emphasis in the early Gospels is on a pretty imminent eschatology. Yeah. That The world, the empire, and the world is not expected to be around for hundreds of years anyway. It's not like we've got to keep on the Romans because, hey, they're the new order. We've got to keep it on the good side of the Roman emperor. No, no, no. The way Jesus portrayed in the synoptics is that the world order, as we know, is going to be completely overturned yeah. and pretty soon. And in fact, according to Mark 13, it's going to happen within the generation they're living. Yeah. But Mark, Mark 13, 30 says all these things will happen within this generation, yeah. which includes the destruction of the temple and the return of the Son of Man, yeah. gathering the elect from the four corners. This is not business. This is not business as usual. This is not the Roman order just continuing forever like it did. So uh, later on with Paul, I agree with you, and with um, with Luke, but in the, in, particularly in Mark and Matthew, you get this strong sense of imminent eschatology. So I don't think they were pro-Roman in the sense of having a high regard. They saw that it was temporary, and it was soon to be overturned by God. Uh, in terms of, um, I'm not sure if you look into this part, but with this phase in Titus and then trying to associate themselves as being a messianic figure. I don't think they did. I mean, so the, 
I'm just going about in circles now. I don't think there's any evidence the most, for that. The most prominent Jewish rabbi in, of the time mentioned the Emperor of Space and all the Emperor Titus as being um, a messiah. But, but which which, which look, Jewish rabbi? Because this is news. Sorry. You've not said this sure. to me before, have you? Yeah. I'm not sure if the internet's going to work so well. But... Yeah, I'm gonna... I need to move around because I'm completely cold and I need, um, my legs are frozen. Um, my fingers are. Any more? Oh, there's another one. Oh, that's like, like, like insects. Yeah, yeah, it's like insects, isn't yeah. it? It's like parasite. Yeah. yeah. Parasites is a rude way of putting it. Yeah, that's parasites. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, just got to find the dude. This is the issue, isn't it? Yeah. I've got to get rid of these microphones. I'm just, uh, I don't know, just put it in the bag or something. Actually, no, Anyway, you're saying you've got some Sorry. Jewish rabbi. What's the name of the Jewish rabbi? The most famous one I thought was Hillel. Hillel. Or maybe Gamaliel. Those two were the most famous ancient Jewish rabbis in Jerusalem. Uh, one of them allegedly taught Paul. So what, what was it? With what they mentioned about what was the, what's the, what's the, what's the name of this rabbi? I'm trying to find it, sorry. Yeah. No, I'm not familiar with what this rabbi said about this. Right. He mentioned, he, I'm not talking about him as being a rabbi, but he also prophesied that Vespasian will become an emperor, right? Yeah, of course. Sure. That's what I know. That's not, that's not disputed. But not a Jewish emperor. Because he wasn't Jewish, he wasn't Jewish anyway. It's unthinkable that a non-Jew would be a Jewish Messiah. Um, yeah. And I know that. Uh, anyway, this will go. Sorry, sir. Okay. So it's um. Yes.